Okay, so hello and very good evening, everyone. We will start with today's internship session. So first, as I uh, say, that we will have the presentation session, and then if there is time remaining, then we will have the general discussion. But if you want, you can ask any question in the chat, and uh, if I will see if I can answer that. Else, I will unmute you so that you can ask the question. If we have any general discussion, we can put it in the chat. So first is Nehal Mani for presentations. Uh, good evening, sir. Yes, uh, good evening. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, sir. Tell me the name of your class. Yes, sir. Can I share my screen? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, sir. You can start. Is the screen visible, sir? Yes. Okay. Uh, just a second, sir. It isn't responding. Now I can see the screen? Yes. Okay. Good evening, sir. I'm Snehal Mane from the Java Developers Group. And my project is <clears throat> stock trading application. And under this project, I have given the task of creating a trend line in a Java using the HDFC CSV data set. So looking forward, we are going to discuss the several topics like what are trend lines and what are support uh, and resistance level, how we will implement it in the code and its live demonstration, its benefits of the trend line, and in last conclusion. So as far we have come across that uh, we have loaded the CSV data, we have made the line chart of the CSV data, but today we are going to perform a, a very important topic that is a trend line. So trend lines are very essential in technical analysis, helping traders and investors uh, to analyze the price trend and make informed decisions. In this presentation, we will explore how to load a CSV data, parse the data, how to visualize them using a Java programming language. By the end of this presentation, you will have a clear idea of how to create a trend line and visualize them using a Java programming language. So let's dive into it. So what are trend lines? Uh, trend lines uh, is basically a graphical presentation of overall trends of the stock prices movement over the period of time. Trend lines uh, doesn't connect to the data points. So uh, when a, a trend line is created, it looks similar to the line chart, but the concept and functionality of both are different. Whereas the line points can connect the points showing the relationship between the uh, given data. So let us say that we have, uh, we are seeing at the chart of the, uh, some of the company stock data, let's say HDFC stock data. And uh, we can see that the line which connects the consecutive highs and lows of the stock price that is called what is the trend line okay so the best fit uh, line displays the overall trend uh, in all the data and ignores the statistical uh, insignificant exceptions so trend lines can also be served as a resistance level and support level so as we have the uh, let's say the sgfa uh, stock prices are increasing day by day so we can create a trend line which goes upward and this upward going trend is called the support level. And if the, uh, let's say, if the stock data uh, or the stock prices are decreasing day by day from past few months, then the, low, the, the downtrend of this line is known as the resistance level. So in the simple words, we can say that the stock prices in which traders are buying so much of the uh, stocks is the support level. And resistance level means that uh, so much of the traders are selling the, uh, the stock, uh, stocks. So that's called the resistance level. So now we have the clear understanding what are trend lines and what are uh, support and resistance level. So let us see how we will implement it using a Java program. So this is the code in which I have imported many of the libraries. I have made many of the methods and I have calculated uh, the closing price uh, uh, along with the time period and displayed it through the uh, downward line and uh, trend line. 
So let's move towards our live demonstration. So here is our, uh, so can you see the screen? Yes, I can see. Okay, sir. So let's see the stock data. So here is the SJC past two months stock data uh, in which uh, columns are included date, open, high, low, close, uh, and volume column. In this presentation, we are going to use the close and date uh, column for our implementation. So here in this code, I have imported the uh, Apache Commons library, JFT chart library, uh, util and IO library. So in the man method, we can see that I have loaded the CSV data. I have passed the CSV data. I have uh, get the data of the closing price and the date co columns. And then I have uh, calculated it for making a line chart. Then after that, we can see that I have calculated the potential support level and the potential sub, uh, resistance level. So for the finding the slope of the upper trend and downtrend, I have calculated it using the simple regression algorithm in this. So this is what the algorithm is that I have been used uh, in this code. So in the next code, we can see that uh, this code is for the displaying the chart. This is for the color of the trend line and this is for the width of the line and in the last we can see that uh, in this last method we can see that it is comparing all the closing prices which are coming uh, from the uh, time period so it is comparing the prices and it's putting the data into the line chart so let's run this code and let's see the output of this code so it has been compiled so we can see here our output. So can you see the output? Yes, it is visible. Okay, sir. So here we can see that uh, here on the y-axis we have closing prices, and here on the x-axis we have the date. So here are uh, here are the legends for the closing price. It is a black line. Uh, closing price is given. Here is the main trend line. Uh, this is the support level line and this is the uh, resistance level this is the upper upper trend and this is the downtrend of it so we can see that uh, the stock data is uh, increasing day by day from the past few days and this overall presentation shows that the trend line is increasing so we can say that the stock price of the hdfc bank has increased so let's move out here towards our presentation. So what are the benefits of the uh, trend lines in the stock data? Trend lines can identify the direction, the strength of the price trend in the stock data. It acts as a dynamic support and resistance levels in the uh, stock data. Uh, it can, uh, traders can also use trend lines to estimate the potential price level that stock may reach in the future. It also predicts the how, uh, how traders can invest in the uh, stock prices. Uh, and can see the stock prices of it for the investing in it. And in the last week, we have explored that how to create a trend line using the Java, uh, using the HDFC bank CSV data. Trend lines are actually a very invaluable tool uh, in technical analysis, providing insights into the price trend, support, and resistance levels. So here are the possibilities for our traders and investors to visualize it better. And by leveraging the power of programming and data analysis, we can gain competitive edge in the stock market and make more informed decisions. So this was the trend line. And here are the references that I have used to make this uh, presentation and the code. And if you have any questions, you can ask, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the attention. I have completed my presentation. Okay. Uh, see, this time your presentation was uh, good, I would say, from last time the conclusion part you have undone. So, based on like this presentation, this conclusion is good enough. Okay. And second of all is that you need to work on your explanation skill. Okay. When you are explaining, try to simplify it more. Okay. 
you can take some regular examples that people might be familiar with okay and second of all is that your story got improved and you did take good example this time but you need to simplify uh, simplify it some more and second is that there is a lot of text on your site you can uh, you know try to make it point wise make sure it is not taking too much space because your overall design of ppt is really good it's good looking and it is like it is really easy to spot like what you are trying to explain right now so we try to reduce the amount of text and second of all instead of just giving a screenshot of your code you can try to add a flow chart of like, you know your uh, logic of code right that okay, be much sir. more better so that it doesn't look like that you have just stick uh, like, you know a screenshot of your code right so try to do that and other than that i would say you are improving but as you do more presentation you will certainly become much better okay? thank you sir yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. So okay. next is I think uh, Manvi. Manvi Lad. Oh, am I audible, sir? Yes, you are. Uh, what is the name of your uh, task? Uh, sir, full workout through Adola, Adola, Adalo app. Yeah, you can start. So just a second. Sir, is uh, screen visible to you? Yes, it is visible. Uh, so my name is Manvi Lad, and I'm from full web development group. Uh, today, I'm excited to present you a real-time stock market data web application and provide you a complete walkout of how it is designed your Adalo platform. So moving on to the next slide. To ensure smooth flow and easy navigation through the presentation, let us start by taking a quick look at the table of content. Uh, by following this structure, we will take you through the journey of developing our real-time stock market data web application using Adalo. Uh, showcasing its features and discussing the challenges encountered along the way. Uh, we will conclude the potential impact of the app and the references to you, uh, which we have used uh, during the development. So let us begin. Imagine uh, you are sitting at your desk, meticulously researching stocks, analyzing market trends, and trying to make best decisions. The pressure is mounting and time is of the essence. But suddenly you realize that the information you are working with is outdated and unreliable. Uh, frustrating, isn't it? Uh, so here are our apps come into the view. So it is a groundbreaking solution that will change the way you approach stock market analysis. Our real-time stock market uh, data web application uh, is developed using the powerful Adalo platform, brings the latest market updates and insights directly, out of, uh, directly uh, to your fingertips. So, so let's dive into the details of this informative uh, web application. So, uh, before we delve uh, before we delve into the feature, let's take a moment to understand the tool that made it at all possible. So, Adalo is an application that, uh, that develop uh, app development platform that enables users to create and customize their own apps without any coding or technical expertise. Uh, with Adalo, user can design apps for both iOS and Android devices, uh, ensuring their app can reach a wider range of audience. Uh, the, the platform offers a very uh, drag and drop functionality, uh, allowing users to easily add various elements uh, and components to their apps. Uh, this component includes uh, buttons, images, text, fields, formats, and modes. So moving on to the uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, Adalo offers a range of powerful features that facilitate app development. Uh, so now, uh, so now let us take a look at some of them. Seamlessly integrate uh, integrate external APIs to fetch real time data or connect with other services. It benefits a vast library of pre built components uh, to enhance your application functionality. Uh, it collects and stores user data, uh, user data uh, effortlessly uh, within your app. Uh, it is used to develop apps that work seamlessly across iOS, Android, and web platform. Uh, it easily, uh, it is, uh, it easily designs and arranges app elements using a user friend, uh, user friendly by drag and drop interface. So, moving on to the next slide. So now our real-time stock market data uh, web application comes packed with exciting features, uh, including uh, including. So it stays up. Uh, so with it, we can stay up, up to date with latest stock market trends, datas, 
we can create a personalized watch list to monitor uh, monitor your preferred stocks analyze stock performance over time through interactive charts and enjoy a seamless and intuitive web interface for a smooth trading experience so moving on to the next slide uh, so here to bring this web application to life we created three essential databases the first database stores user information where i have mentioned uh, where i have uh, mentioned two records uh, then the second stores stock details where i have mentioned four records uh, and the third contains the details of stock we want to add to our portfolio this databases forms a backbone of our application enabling us to provide real time and personalized information so now uh, let's dive into the most exciting part of today's presentation that is live demonstration of our real time stock market tick just a second It's not working. So just a second. Sorry for the disturbance, sir. Don't know why it's not working. Just a second. Uh, sir, is it visible? Yeah, it is visible. So firstly, uh, this is what the login page I have created. Uh, if the user is already uh, already signed up, then they have to log they have to log in. Or if the user uh, doesn't have any account, then they have to sign up. So as uh, I'm already uh, signed up, so I will log in here using the credentials I have mentioned in the database. So this will redirect us to the home page. So this is what the homepage of our web application looks like. This stock up is the logo of our application on homepage. Uh, when we'll click on homepage, we will be uh, we will be on the same homepage. When we will click on about, uh, we will be redirected to our about page where we have mentioned the uh, our what the, our real time stock market data web application is, and. When we will move, uh, when we will click on the news button, it will uh, redirect to redirect us to the latest news related to the stock market. And we will click on, and when we will click on the images, it will redirect to it will redirect to the page where from where this news was was taken. Uh, so next, on the portfolio, when we click on the portfolio, this will redirect to our pro, uh, portfolio page where we can add where we can add some of the stocks some of uh, stock store watch list these are the uh, these are the stocks which i have mentioned in my database so let us uh, say we have to add infosys to our watch list so we will click uh, we will select infosys here then we will when we will click on this add button our uh, our infosys 
uh, stock will be added to our watch list, which we can uh, uh, see later. When we will move back to our home page, uh, here uh, at the corner, we have our profile page. This will redirect to our profile page. And here we, uh, we, we can see the information of the user which are currently logged in and all the information of the user. And then we'll move back. So here I have mentioned four, uh, here I have mentioned stocks of four different companies, Apollo, Infosys, Tata, Indian Oil, and we can add more. So when we click on this more button of any of the stock, we will be redirect to, redirected to that stock's information. So here we can see we have volume, open, high, low, close information, and the name of uh, name of the stock and about the uh, about the about the company, what the company is. Up. Uh, so here I have mentioned all this, and uh, same we can move for Infosys also. Here I have mentioned all the information related to, related to the Infosys stock. And here are some charts, line chart and bar chart of the stock present in our database. So I have uh, on the Y axis, I have taken the high prices of the stock and the, on the X axis, I have taken the name of the stock. So we can see, uh, we can see from this that the Tata consultancy is having the highest price in uh, consider in consideration with all of this stock we can also see this using a bar chart and here we have a logout button uh, which will redirect us again to a login page so here's what our live demonstration ends so moving back to our slide uh, uh, so uh, now uh, developing this app in adalo wasn't easy uh, its challenges we encountered limited uh, limited uh, customization options, faced difficulty integrating certain APIs, uh, experienced occasional performance issues. However, however, by leveraging key Adalo features and implementing best practices, we were able to uh, overcome those challenges and deliver a robust and functional app. So moving on to the next slide, conclusion. Uh, so here, uh, here we reached the end of our presentation. Uh, imagine trader, imagine a trader uh, uh, in the industry for years uh, trying to navigate the complexity of stock market. They experience both success and stock bet. Uh, but one uh, one thing that consistently uh, uh, consistently eludes them is that is uh, staying ahead of the market trends. One day they stumbled upon our real time stock market data web application uh, and decided to give it a try. Uh, little did they know that this application would uh, change their trading journey uh, for uh, they explored user first that allowed them to uh, to find customizable features that allowed them to personalize their trading experience the apps uh, the uh, apps real time updates kept them uh, informed of latest market movements enabling them to uh, seize opportunities before before they slipped away the historical data charts provided them with the valuable insights into past trends and platforms. So as we conclude, let us remember that the world of trading is even uh, uh, ever evolving and staying ahead requires right tools and information. A real-time stock market data web application uh, fueled by Adalo's power and innovation stand at the forefront and this uh, of this revolution. So. Uh, this is what the reference. Uh, this is what the references I have used uh, during my pre uh, during for my presentation and the app. Uh, so thank you. Now I'm open to the any questions or query you may have. Sir, I have completed with my presentation. Yeah. Uh, just give me one second. Okay. So your name of the task was, I think, uh, uh, getting started and full walkthrough of Adalo, right? Adalo, yes. Sir. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, your presentation looked more like overview of project synopsis than Adalo application, right? Yeah. You focus too much on the stock trading application part of the project than Adalo. In, uh, I think, uh, in the task you need to, it says that Adalo is no good platform for building mobile and application. In this mm -hmm. start, the intern will learn how to get started with Adalo and walk through its feature and functionality by following your tutorial. 
video, they will then build a responsive website using Adalo and present their work in Spanish, right? So you should be focusing more on the like you know functionalities of Adalo than usability of your application, right? So when you are giving the present the project demonstration on this application, you should have focused more towards the element, like which elements help you to achieve particular functionality, right? So you have used chart, then how you were able to create the chart, right? So although did, you did explain in the presentation, uh, because in stock training application, it is heavily focused towards chart that was included, but there are also many things that can be like, you know, explained with respect to Adalo. And also I think Adalo application, was not really like you know given much uh, exposure on so you need to give more exposure on the actual Adalo application and its feature and like how anyone can use it to create an application right then create a, a stock trading application so that was the point but you did create an actual application that is usable so that is a really good thing okay i really like it when an intern like creates an application or not just like simple random application just for the sake of presentation so this is a good thing but you need to learn like how to demonstrate your actual project right so when you are demonstrating a project a lot of intern what they do is they only demonstrate the usability of a project right so as a developer, you need to demonstrate me how you developed the application. Yeah. Right. That does make sense, right? Okay. And not the usability of the application. The usability of the application, there is un, like, you know, separate uh, team members there will be, who will be working on the explaining the usability of the application to the end user, right? That is a different thing. But what you need to focus on is like actual development process, right? I want that. Uh, okay. But it was focused more towards like uh, stock trading application. But uh, you should focus more toward like, uh, you know, like uh, I can say uh, components, I think. In Adalo, they're called components, right? So okay. the components of Adalo application. So that uh, when I see this presentation again, I should have a good idea of like what are the different components available in Adalo and if I can use it to like, let us say, create a sample application, right? That will be much more preferable. So keep in mind next time. So uh, that is like you know much more relevant with respect to the task. But it is a good thing that you have created it, and I can see that this is really well made actual application. There are also people who have created the this application in Adalo, but uh, I like this uh, like you know overall design much better. So good work on this one. Right? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, one. So next is Vijay. Sir, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Just a second. Uh, can you tell me the name of your task? Uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, understanding trade view screener and exploring stock market data. Yeah, you can start. So, so uh, here are the contexts of the. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve Jordan uh, I have joined in Hackweda. Uh, as an intern in Python programming uh, uh, domain. The project given to me was developing a stock screen application in Python. And the task was to understand the trading view screener and exploring stock market data. Uh, these are the contents uh, for the given PPT. Uh, uh, trading view screener website, features and functionalities of the trading view screener, different source of stock market data, technical indicators, designing uh, design of the database, uh, documentation, Finally, the conclusion and the references which I have used to make this PPT. PPT. So uh, let's let's just say that you are a new, uh, you are interested in trading, and you have just visited this trading view screener website, uh, which offers a powerful uh, tool for traders and investors to quickly scan and filter the market based on the specific conditions and criteria, helping them to identify the potential trading opportunities. So, for, but basically, you need to understand the features and functionality to uh, to know how the trading works and uh, in a profitable way, so you can uh, earn some what cash. So here are the features and functionalities. Uh, the trading view screener provides uh, the charting and technical analysis, real-time marketing data, social trading and collaboration, uh, trading and order execution, customization and personalization. Uh, let's get into the features and functionalities right for now. Charting and technical analysis. Uh, so uh, basically, the this trade view screener application helps uh, helps the user to understand uh, how the how the uh, Trading uh, trading platform works. Uh, 
whether if the uh, required uh, stock or trade is profitable or not it shows uh, as in a uh, chart types like bar chart and candle uh, candlestick uh, diagram uh, uh, user can apply a wide range of technical indicators and overlays to their charts such as moving average boiler boiler bands and uh, Boiler bands. We'll uh, discuss about this uh, in the later part of this presentation. Uh, customizable uh, studies. Traders can create and save their own custom indicators and studies using Pipeline Script, Trading View, uh, scripting and language. Comparisons and uh, correlations. It allows comparing multiple securities. Securities in the sense like uh, trades, different stocks. You can compare and. Uh, uh, check whether if uh, which which trade is better to invest on like that so it provides a real time market data uh, trading view covers a broad range of financial markets including stocks cryptocurrencies foreign exchange and much more uh, real time data feeds user can access real time data including price quotes volumes uh, ask, and other relevant information for different financial uh, instruments market depth and book record it provides access to market depth and order book information to analyze supply and demand dynamics uh, in the sense basically which uh, trade or stock is more in demand for the users uh, like which is making more profit to the users and news and economic calendars traders can stay informed with real-time uh, news updates and economic calendars displaying upcoming economic events and announcements social trading and collaboration so uh, in this trade view screen uh, there is uh, an uh, application which we'll see in a in few minutes uh, where you can interact with the community uh, in that uh, uh, trade view screen uh, application and uh, get more information through uh, by from the people who has already uh, been through this platform and uh, gained profit using this web application and trading and order execution, paper trading, user can practice trading strategies without using real money through trading views, simulated trading uh, environment and alerts and notification. Traders can set up custom alerts based on price levels, technical indicators or other criteria to receive real time notification through SMS or push notification. Customization and personalization. Yeah, when uh, you have gotten, uh, when you decide to, uh, study one uh, stock uh, there would be uh, there you would have much information in your hands so you 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 may need some time to understand uh, uh, what is the fl uh, flow of that stock currently uh, whether it's in the profit margin or it's in the loss margin uh, uh, so there are different trading uh, so here the trading view offers different themes and color schemes allowing user to personalize the appearance of the charts and interface uh, let's just uh, let me share this uh, the web application part which helps. Just a sec. Just a sec. So is my screen visible? Yeah. Yeah, it is visible. Yeah. So this is the uh, uh, this is the trade viewing uh, web application which I was uh, referred uh, referred to. Uh, uh, so here is the basic understanding of the uh, stock of Reliance, uh, Reliance uh, trades. Uh, here it shows uh, how this uh, stock is. Uh, Basically, it shows how, how what is the value of this stock if you buy in. Uh, this value shown here, oh, uh, 2749. Uh, this is the opening uh, value of this stock for Reliance and uh, uh, for the day, for the day uh, opening price. And here is the highest price it has gone and uh, the lowest price it has been gone through the day. And this is the closing price of the stock for the day. Uh, so uh, here is the community page where you can uh, <clears throat> understand how tra trading uh, works and different ideas to make profitable income through trading. Uh, they have uh, 
uh, education uh, ideas and uh, live stream. They also conduct live streams which help other users uh, so, uh, such that newcomers who can understand how the trading system works and how to make it a profitable uh, thing. So is, is my screen visible? Uh, hello. I can see the browser. Yo, you took the browser just a second. Uh, So is my PPT visible? It is visible. Yeah. Uh, so there are different stock, uh, sources for stock market data. Uh, by uh, by researching and exploring different source sources and uh, their applicabilities, we can gain a better understanding of how to access and filter stock market based on various technical analysis indicators, enabling them to eff effectively retrieve and manipulate the data for analysis and trading purposes. Uh, here are some of the commonly used sources of stock market data. Yahoo Finance is Yahoo Finance and Alpha Vantage. Uh, Yahoo Finance is basically just like uh, the Trade View application, web application which we have seen. So, uh, and uh, the Alpha Vantage is an API which helps uh, in getting uh, gathering the information regarding the trades and everything. We will uh, discuss about this uh, later in the documentation part. Uh, Technical indicators. So technical indicators are mathematical calculations based on historical price and volume data that traders use to analyze market trends, identify potential trading opportunities, and make informed trading decisions. Few of the indicators uh, are uh, moving average, relative strength index, and moving average convergence and divergence. So this is the database which I have created uh, using MySQL, uh, I will demonstrate it in a few minutes uh, during the uh, documentation part. So coming through the documentation part, uh, let's just... So is my screen visible? Yeah, it is visible. Yeah, so here is the documentation which I have created uh, for, the, for the task given to me. Uh, so th these are the contents of the documentation, uh, introduction, research methodology, how technical indicators, different source of uh, stock market data, database design and challenges faced, and in the end, the conclusion. So the assigned task uh, involves the understanding of the uh, trade view screener and website a trade view screener website and exploring different source of stock market data, which I have uh, shared with you guys earlier. Uh, uh, these are all the information which I have just shown me, uh, shown and shared you through the PPT. Uh, let's get main to the technical indicators. So here are the technical indicators. Uh, so basically, the technical indicators are mathematical calculation based on historical price and volume uh, data that traders use to analyze uh, market trends. A few of them are moving average. Uh, the, the basic concept of a moving, moving average is to calculate the average price of an asset over a specific number of previous pe periods. A new data, as new data becomes available, the oldest data point is dropped and the newest data point is added to the calculation, hence the term moving average and uh, relative strength index. The RSI is a momentum oscillator that measures the speed and change of the price movements. It helps. Uh, identify overbought and oversold conditions in a security, basically a trade or stock stock market. So moving average convergence and divergence. The MACD is a trend following momentum indicator that shows the relationship between the two moving averages of a security price. It consists of components, uh, the MACD line, the signal line and a histogram. The MACD line is calculated by subtracting the long term uh, exponential moving average from the short term exponential moving average. So uh, here's the different uh, sources of stock market data. 
So basically, Yahoo Finance is a popular financial news and data platform that provides a wide range of information related to stocks, in, investing, and uh, the global financial market. Uh, the, it offers real-time stock quotes, financial news articles, portfolio management tools, historical price charts, company profiles, uh, analytic recommendations, and much more. So the alpha advantage, alpha advantage is a financial data provi provider and uh, API application pro programming interface platform that offers real-time and historical market data for stocks, uh, cryptocurrencies, foreign exchange, and various other financial in instrumentations. So. Uh, for designing the database, uh, first I have created a MySQL database, which I have downloaded from the link given here. After clicking on this link, you will be redirected to, to the to this page. Uh, here you can uh, you have you can download this uh, highlighted version as uh, shown here uh, for Windows. After clicking on that. Uh, uh, download page, you will be redirected to this MySQL community downloads, where you have to click uh, on, uh, if you are downloading it for the first time, you have to click it on no thanks, just start my download. After clicking through that, uh, here is the installation process after the download. So click on custom and move, uh, choose your, you have to choose the custom and click on next. And again, uh, here you have to uh, drop down uh, from MySQL servers to, uh, uh, through MySQL server and uh, to get MySQL server 8.0, which is the uh, product which we'll uh, install in our computer. Similarly, we have to do a do for MySQL bench and MySQL shell, which we'll use uh, during uh, the preparation of our database. After that, you have to uh, click on execute uh, for the installation process. And after the execution, you have to click on next. Uh, then you will be re uh, redacted to the product configuration where you have to click on next. Um, then you will be de redacted to the uh, ne networking where you have to create a server uh, which helps uh, in storing the database uh, which we have created. Uh, just click it, on, click on next, and for the authentication process, click on next so that you can uh, protect your uh, database uh, with a given password of your uh, choice. After after setting the password, click on next. Uh, uh, similarly, fo follow all these steps uh, to install uh, this uh, MySQL in your lab computer. After installing the MySQL workbench application, uh, uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, opening page of the MySQL workbench. Uh, we can log in uh, by clicking on the clicking on local uh, instance, which we'll uh, do in a few minutes, uh, and enter the password so you can uh, start saving your database. So after the install, uh, so basically I had to I, I I was given a task to create a database, but I did not have any resources resources like information which I have to import into that database which I have created. So. Uh, just a so so I have uh, created uh, so I have programmed a Python code which uh, uh, which uh, creates a, an a, uh, Excel file uh, with the information uh, mm -hmm. regarding the uh, regarding the trades and the uh, and the price of the stock. Uh, of on that day, uh, here I have uh, just uh, uh, linked my uh, Google collab with my uh, Google Drive. After linking, uh, just, just yeah, after linking my Google collab with my Google Drive, I have imported Pandas, which helps me in importing import exporting my uh, data. Sorry. So here is the URL of the uh, stocks uh, screener, which. Uh, which uh, we will uh, read uh, uh, after reading this data. Uh, here is the output of the data which, ha which has been stored. Uh, after after uh, storing the information in the data, I have uh, stored it in an uh, Excel file and uh, imported uh, this to my uh, Google Drive. Uh, 
so uh, this is the Uh, so this is the uh, uh, Excel file which I have uh, created using the code uh, shown before uh, and stored it in stored the information uh, regarding the trades and all uh, for the day. Uh, after this, uh, I have we have to download it uh, in the form of CSV so that we can uh, so that we can uh, add to our database. So. Just a sec. So, can you see my screen? Oh, which, yeah, you can see the start menu of your windows. Yeah. Uh, So can you see uh, MySQL Workbench? Yeah, I can see. Yeah. So here is the uh, web application of uh, MySQL Workbench when you have opened. Uh, here, just click on local instance of MySQL and enter your password. And after entering uh, into it, uh, here is the, uh, sorry about that. Uh, I'll just remove all this. This will be the basic uh, default uh, system uh, when you log into your MySQL Workbench. Here you can, uh, clicking here, you can create a new schema uh, to, which connects to the server to import your data. Uh, and click on apply. After that, click on apply once again. Then uh, here the, uh, here, the schema has been created. Now you can uh, yeah, import the da uh, data which we have stored in a, uh, uh, which we have downloaded uh, in our computer uh, in the form of CSV file. After that, click on next. Uh, click on next again. Uh, here is the data. Uh, this is the preview of uh, how our data looks. Uh, clicking on next here to import the data. Uh, let's just refresh the schema. So here I have uh, basically I have stored the information which I, which I have uh, stored it in the form of a CSV file into MySQL Workbench. Uh, so, uh, sorry, our oh, documentation. So, uh, the challenges faced during this uh, creation of my PPD. Uh, my task was understanding different types of data, extracting uh, the data set from the website and creating the database with the help of data set created using Google Colab. Uh, in conclusion, uh, trading Trade Viewer is a specialized software designed for traders and investors to track and analyze the trading activities. MySQL Workbench is a graphical user interface tool developed specifically for working with uh, MySQL database. Uh, it enables user to design, model, create, and manage MySQL uh, database efficiently. Combining these two things helps the user to understand the trading market much better and gives them the better edge on the investments he wanted to make. Uh, so can you see my screen? See my PPT? Yeah, I can see your PPT. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this was the conclusion which I made earlier during the documentation process. And the, the, these are the referral links which I have used to make this PPT and the documentation possible. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can mail me through uh, my email uh, using as mentioned below.
and yeah thank you for your patience for listening to this my presentation actually okay so i hope your uh, presentation is done sir okay uh, so first of all is that uh, when you are giving like you know big presentations right so sometimes what happens is that you start just reading from the content right and you did that right in the documentation part, uh, there are some things that should have been explained, like uh, I think it was MSCD and also there are some important concepts that should have been part of the explanation. So you need to work on that because the thing is that those are like, you know, the core concepts of your task, right? Yeah. So work on that part. And second part is that to see your overall, like, you know, the way you deliver the presentation at the start and at the mid what is good. But as it kept on going, you know, like, uh, I think uh, it was a, you couldn't like, you know, hold, continue it, right? That is, I, I just felt like it, right? And second is that when uh, you said that uh, you had some problem with the database, so you oh, uh, had uh, written the Python script to fetch the data? Uh, yeah, or, actually, yeah. I was uh, they, uh, I was given a task to create a database. So mm -hmm. for uh, empty data would not look, that good, right? Only no, just creating no, no, no. a... What you need to do is that, uh, see, I think uh, if I can uh, just confirm that uh, you're in the email itself, you should have seen, uh, it should say that study the trading screener uh, website. That was one. And second was explore different sources of stock market data, right? Yeah. Third was research technical indicators. So what you need to do is you need to research the stock market data from like various sources like Yahoo Finance and Alpha Vintage. I think you have got the data, right? From the yeah. using so, Python script. Yeah. So you need to analyze that. And then you need to create a database schema, which can hold that, right? And yeah. even if it is a dummy data, that is completely fine. But okay. the task was to like, you know, design a schema for that uh, okay. type of data, right? Yeah. And second of all is that your documentation is really great. Okay, you have included things like installation and everything, but I don't think installation part was really needed in the explanation, right? Okay. You should have just mentioned if there is like you know important bits in the inter installation that uh, I should know, okay. because in MySQL there are like a lot of things can be installed, right? So you can just yeah. say that these are the things that should be installed, and then you can skip it. And second of all is that. Uh, uh, just the MySQL part was, I think, uh, remaining. So what you can do is you can create, try to create a schema. And after you have created it, you can go in technical support chat. You can say that I have created the schema and that will do. Okay. 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 Fine. Yeah. I have created it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. So yeah. I think uh, we can move on to Manish Ghosting. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yes. Hello. Yeah, uh, can you be the name of your task? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. My task name is to read CSV data and plot candlestick pattern in Python. Yeah, you can start. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Uh, myself, Manish Bosley. Today, I'm going to present you my project uh, uh, to read CSV data and uh, plot candlestick pattern in Python. First, uh, we are going to see here what uh, we need, what are the uses, and uh, how we read the CSV file, what is CSV file, and what are candlestick patterns, how we are plotting and, uh, candlestick patterns, and purpose of using uh, candlestick. So, introduction. Welcome to this presentation on reading CSV data and plotting candlestick patterns in Python. In this presentation, we will explore the importance of CSV files as a popular file format for storing and exchanging data. We will also dive into the world of candlestick patterns and their significance in financial analysis. You can expect to learn how to read CSV files in Python, identify common candlestick patterns, and plot them using Matplotlib library. This library is used to plot different types of graphs and various things. Our goal is to equip you with the knowledge and tools of analyze and visualize financial data with ease. 
and uh, we will study here about the csv file a csv file is a comma separated value file it, it is a type of plain text file used to store tabular data each line in the file separate is separated by a row and each value is and each row is sep separated by a comma within a row is separated by a comma csv files are popular because they are easy to create and read and can be exchanged between different programs and systems to read the csv file in python we can use the built-in csv module the module provides functions for reading and writing csv files and handles any formatting issues that may arise common use cases for csv files include storing data from spreadsheets databases and other resources and analyzing large data sets using python so next we come here is our the candlestick patterns so candlestick patterns are as an essential tool in financial analysis many traders here use this tool to uh, analyze the data and uh, use for their financial purpose this is a very valuable insight in market trends and price movements by analyzing the pattern formed by candlesticks traders gain a better understand understanding of market sentiments and make move forward trading decisions there are many different types of candlestick patterns each with its unique characteristics and interpretations some common pattern include the doji hammer and in influencing patterns this the, by learning how to identify these patterns on chart traders can gain a better understanding of market tra trends and make more informed trading decisions so these candlestick patterns helps the traders to analyze the data and they, they make the decisions on their financial next plotting candlestick patterns to plot candlestick patterns in python we will be using the matplotlib library first we need to import the necessary modules and define our data here we create the new figures and axis object using the function plot subplots next we can use the candlestick ohlc function to plot the candlestick chart the fun the function requires the open high low the ohlc here it is the open high low and close values for each data point as the candlestick shows there is a opening there and there is a close and how high the stock is it raised and how low this shows here we can also customize the appearance of the chart by setting parameters such as color and width next why we use candlestick what is the purpose of using a candlestick using visual representation of price data uh, there are very different types of uh, figures we can use such as uh, uh, we can use bar charts we can use pie charts to uh, ch chart to give the visual representation but candlestick charts offer a visual representation of price data over a specific time period candlestick charts are used for their ability to visualize represented data price data identify trends and patterns facilitate historical analysis support technical analysis and serve as a common industry standard we uh, they provide a comprehensive view of price behavior and are essential tool for trading analyst and understanding making decision financial markets so this is a working uh, this is the code here we have used here import this is the code we are here we install all the necessary libraries for the first is pandas then second is a matplotlib and third is the mpl finance and we are reading the uh, stock market of which I, which has been provided by the hackweather limited and by this uh, csv file we are going to plot the candlestick so here this uh, this function this uh, this is a df the data frames from the data here con this converts the data column to date that date time for in date time format to it, it helps to plot the candlestick according to the date and time this code block converts the date column to date time format sorts the data frames by ascending in ascending order and resets the index to reflect the new sorted order this is the reset the it resets the index Uh, this is the next code yeah the purpose of this operation is to prepare the data for plotting candlesticks the first step converts data columns to the matplotlib data format so that it can be used in x-axis value 
for the candlesticks. This code block creates a figure and axis plots the candlestick charts on the axis using OHLC data formats. The x axis and dates records the x axis tables and readability. And this is the output we have gained from the CSV file. Advantages it is easy to use. Python provides a variety of libraries and tools for data analysis and visualization making it easy to read CSV files and plot candlestick patterns. Libraries such as pandas and matplotlib offer convenient functions to handle CSV files and create visualizations. Here, determine the current state of the market at the, to determine the current state of the mind of class just by looking at the color and length of the candlestick traders can determine the instantly if the market is strengthening or weakening. Seeing the direction of the market more easily, one can, one, on a candlestick chart, the color and shape of a candlestick can help traders determine uptrend is part of bullish movement to simplify a bearish spike. There are some disadvantages also. If you are a short term trader or you have time as an important factor in your system, candlestick patterns and indicators will not work normally with the charting setup. For a fresh it should learn all the patterns, not the conclusion. In conclusion, we have learned about the importance of CSV file data and plotting candlestick patterns in Python for financial analysis. We have defined what a CSV file is and how to read it using Python. We have also explored common candlestick patterns and how to identify them in a chart. By applying what we have learned in this presentation, you can analyze financial data more effectively and make informed decisions to continue learning. We encourage you to explore more candlestick patterns. Yes. And these are my references. Any questions? And this is if you want to contact me, you can contact from email ID. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I hope your presentation is done. Yes, sir. Okay. See, in a presentation, I would say work on your content, right? And try to give explanation, not uh, like reading from the slide. Like uh, at the start, there was like it looked like a presentation, but as you moved on, like the conclusion of basically you just uh, read, right? And also, your content should not be like this, where you are using like uh, words like we uh, encourage you, right? Yes, you are giving a presentation, that means you are giving a presentation, right? So, speak like you are telling something, right? Instead of saying past it, it looks like you have copied it from something, right? If you read it, you will know it, right? And go back to the conclusion slide. Which slide, sir? Conclusion. Yes, sir. Yeah. So now, uh, what do you think about this slide? Yes, sir. It has been uh, looking that we, I have used V many times here, sir. Yeah. So, like, there is a lot of text, right? So, what we yes, can do is, you can add a couple of points. Let us say you have added two points at the, like, uh, above the line and two points below the line, right? And it is and, like paragraph. Yeah. Right? And second is that if you are not comfortable like giving presentation, that is completely fine. What you can do is in PPT, there is the option to like you know click to add notes. That part only you will be able to see when you are in presentation mode, right? So you can read it from there, you can take reference from there, that is completely fine. But don't try to like you know read it from the slide itself. That doesn't really look good. Okay, so work on your presentation skills. Because see, the content is good. The task you have done is uh, correct. The, you have explained the code. It's just that you need to work on your own presentation skills, right? So I will try to do next code in next time. Yeah, so that will be much more better. Okay, thank you, Manish. So next is Tanu. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, then the name of your task. Sir, creating a Linux on AD creating a Linux on AWS easy to install. Yeah, you can start. Okay, sir. Sir, is my screen visible to you? Yeah, it is visible. Okay, sir. So first of all, good evening, everyone. Myself Tanu from AWS Cloud Computing Department. My project name is Cloud Infrastructure Operation. And my task name is create a Linux instance on AWS EC2. So let's start. So today I am basically want to deliver our PPT on launch a Linux instance on AWS EC2. So these are the contents which I'm going to discuss. So firstly, I will be discussing 
about the introduction to AWS EC2 and Linux instance. Then I will be discuss about creating an AWS account and choosing the Linux AMI and the types of instances. Then I will configure security groups and the key pairs. Then after I will discussing about the connecting to instance using SSH. Then last installing and configuring the Linux in, in operating system and the last conclusion. So first of all, I will introduce what do you mean by AWS EC2. So first of all, AWS EC2 stands for Amazon Web Service Elastic Compute Cloud. It is a basically a web service that provides resizable compute capacity in the cloud. In simpler terms, AWS EC2 allows users to rent virtual computer on which they can run their own application. Here, in uh, basically AWS cloud computing provide when the use uh, here the users are not responsible to manage their resources. Here, the AWS is responsible for managing the resources. Now, coming to the next slide, uh, I will be discussing about what do you understand by Linux instance basics. So, Linux instance are virtual machines that can run on the AWS EC2 services. They allow users to run Linux based applications and services on the cloud without having to manage physical hardware. Users can choose from a variety of pre configured images on create their own custom images to meet their specific needs. So, now I'm, I'm giving a live demonstration how to create an AWS EC2. So let's start. Sir, is my screen visible to you? Yeah, it's visible. Okay, sir. So basically, Amazon provided a free TI, free TI, free TI account for one, one year. So first of all, we have to sign in AWS. So we have to write the email address, then click on the next. After we have to set a password, then sign in. So So yeah, this is this is the AWS console home. So we have to click on the services. We have to select the compute services. Then we have to click on EC2. So this is the EC2 dashboard. We have to navigate this. So now see here launch instance. We have to click on this. After clicking on this, we have to give the name of our instance. Like we like I am giving the name my Linux server. Then in the next tab, we have to choose the AMI machine image. I will be choosing Amazon Linux 2023 AMI, which is free tier eligible. Then after that, we have to uh, choose the instance type. I am choosing the T2 micro, which is free tier eligible. Then after that, we have to create a new key pair. Basically, new key pair is for the encryption password to log in in the EC2. Like I am giving the key, key pair name like uh, uh, Tanu. Sorry. Like Linux. Okay. So basically, uh, our Windows operating sub, sub sorry basically our window operating system support dot pm file not the, not the .ppk file basically dot ppk file support the putty so we have to click on dot pam file okay so now create key pair after that see this Linux dot pam file creating. So come to the slide. Basically, I have discussed this recently that we have choosing the Linux AMI and the instance type in the live demonstration. Then we basically create a new key pair. Then after that, our launch will be launched. Then after that, our instance will be launched. Here we have to basically click on this, then instance state will be running. After running, then our instance will be launched successfully. So after that, launching our instance, then what we have to do, 
we have to do now connecting to our instance using ssh okay so the, there are so many steps is so first of all we have to download putty so this is the link here we can download our putty so yeah so this is the download putty we have to click this now see here windows installer either of 32 bit or of 64 bit it depends on your cpu architecture so my cpu architecture is of 64 bit now i will be select this so this will be downloaded here so then we went to the downloaded documents this is our download so yeah here our putty is downloaded so we have to now install this so we have to click on next then next then we have to install we have to finish so see this this is our uh, putty installed successfully now what we have to do coming to our slide now the second step is that uh, in our computer we have to open up putty gen okay now third step when we are opening our putty key generator this is the screenshot so here what we see that here basically putty support a, a dot ppk file not the dot pam file so we have to basically convert dot pam file to dot ppk file after after when we are converting this dot pam file to dot ppk file here this is load option is there we have to select this after that we load our dot pam file then save it as dot ppk file then we have to when we are when we have launched our instance there is a public ip address we have to copy and then here host name is there we have to paste this now we can now in this screenshot we can see connection option then we have to ssh there then the browse will uh, then browse will be there then we have to paste the dot ppk file then we have to open this after that opening this we came to our uh, install and configuring the linux operating system here we can see that login as we have we have to write ec to user then our successfully instance will be installed and our linux operating system so this is our basically how to create our linux uh, instance on aws ec2 this is our main point so after in the end conclusion what is the conclusion about the uh, my task that how to create a linux on aws ec2 instance so what is this uh, what we have to do uh, in conclusion first of all we have creating a linux instance then we basically choose the uh, linux ami then security then we create a basically a key pair then connecting our instance using sshs then install our config the linux operating system with aws ec2 we have the flexibility to create manage and scale our linux instance in the cloud making it an ideal choice for web hosting application deployment and other computing needs so this is the conclusion so thank you any question regarding my presentation so please may ask okay i hope your presentation is done yes sir okay so first of all i would say your project demonstration was really well done okay uh, thank you sir like overall your project that you have uh, like created that was really well done but when it comes to the presentation there are a lot of things that can be like you know covered with respect okay, to ec2 sir. so let's say like uh, what about uh, ec2 versus other competitors that are there uh, as well as like cost of ec2 uh, like you know things like this and these are the things that should be covered in a presentation when it comes to the task you will just need to create an ec2 instance and you were able to do that live right so okay, uh, really well done a lot of people have done it but they have only included the screenshot i really like that you have done it on live but uh, i think with respect to the actual presentation the content can be improved and also there is a lot of text there are a lot of paragraphs so in presentation try not to have a paragraph instead like uh, try to have like you know uh, point voice uh, uh, i can say like slides right okay and sir. you can include actual content that you want in the ex uh, expression itself that will be much more better okay, okay sir yeah. thank so you sir work on your presentation skills and keep up with the project demonstration skills okay, okay sir yeah thank, thank you, you sir. so we'll move on to ritwik raj
Is your uh, task to develop a doctor search website? Yes, sir. Okay, you can start. Hello. Yes, yes, you are uh, audible. Good evening, sir. My name is Ritvikar, and uh, today I am going to present my project, which is on Doctor Search website. And uh, here we will get to know how we will build and design the website using Figma, and uh, how we will integrate it using APIs and databases. And after that, we will see how uh, the output we will see. So, that. so we have moved the PPTs. Is the PPT visible? Oh, yeah, I can see okay. Thank you. So, this is the contents where we will see the project goals, designing the web app, posting and creating the database, and then creating the backend APIs, unit testing. After that, we will move on to front end, back end APIs. And at last, we will see the project demo. So now we'll move on to the next slide. So the project goal is first, uh, we will understand the use of Figma. We can use Figma or Adobe XD, whichever we want. Or after that, we will see the Figma plugin, like Anima and Locofy, which will help in converting the designs into HTML and CSS code that will uh, save development time and it is very convenient and efficient also. We can uh, create any type of web designs using this. So now we'll, after that, we will understand how to create database and web services, which will help us to search doctors. And then we will perform backend web services, which uh, we will use in testing the website and which we will use Postman for this. And after that, we will integrate the front end and back end of the website. So, this is the designing API, uh, designing of the web app. Sorry. I use uh, Figma and uh, to create uh, the design of the website. And uh, I also used uplabs.com, which helped me to take the design patterns from the website. And uh, it also, I have many templates and uh, web designs in it. So Figma helps us to create some quick prototype ideas which we can share with our clients and show them. So they will see that if the if the expectation is matching or not, then we can update it and change it according to the clients. So after that, I've used Locofy, which helps us to design the uh, web. Uh, website design into HTML and CSS format. So, as we, as I uh, said earlier, it saves a lot of time. That's why we are using Locofy, and uh, it uh, also can add basic animations uh, to buttons and links. So, if we want to uh, like uh, add animations to the buttons or drop downs, or if you want that. If you want to click something and it uh, drags down to a particular page of the website, it can do that also. So this is what uh, it does and uh, we can use it to create input forms. So these are the things, features of the Locofy app. Now we'll move on to the designing uh, where I've used Figma. This, uh, this is the Figma application website. I've used Locofy plugin. Now I'll go, uh, I'll go to the next slide. Uh, this, in this uh, so slide, we will see how I am host, uh, hosting and creating that. For uh, HTML and CSS, uh, we got this from uh, converting that uh, Sigma and uh, I've used that uh, this Locofy plugin, which helped me to convert the design into HTML and CSS file. So code and I've used triple zero web host. It helps to host my website for free. So uh, next we will see the steps I have followed. So this is the web host file manager where we can see 
uh, all the codes uh, which was converted using Locofy is uh, inserted in the web host. This is the website doc search. It is hosted on doc search one two three. Here the link doc search one two three by Rithik dot triple zero web host app dot com. We will see this in the demo part. Now we'll move on to the next slide, which is uh, the database I've created for the doc search. Here we can, this will all, I will also show this in the demo part. This is just for the reference. I have used ID, doctor name, doctor information, doctor city and doctor image and doctor category. We insert doctor, uh, doctor, uh, city and doctor category to uh, search for the doctors in that particular city. These are the database and now we'll see the next slide. Uh, for creating the web uh, uh, services and unit testing, uh, for creating web services, I use PHP and for unit testing, I use Postman. So, I created web service using PHP and performed it use Postman. So I'll move to the next slide. This is the web service.php code where I can, we can see that uh, I have used two parameters that is search and area. And it helps to uh, filter the doctors using the particular search area, search and area. So if the search and area is set uh, and host database user and database name and database uh, password. Uh, if it matches, then it will help us to uh, connect to the database uh, for the website. So if it connects, it will show that uh, connected successfully, else it will show connection failed. So we, I've used SQL query that is select star from doctors where doctor city, uh, where doctor search area and search parameter matches, then it will show the contents of the database. And after that, if number of rows is greater than zero, it will uh, fetch all the ID, doctor name, doctor information and doctor image, and it will show us in the website. After that, uh, if it doesn't uh, match, if the rows is less, then it will show that uh, result is false and message, message will show that no doctors uh, fetched. So I will move on to the next slide. This is the Postman website where I have used, which I have used to test the web service.php file. So we'll see it in the demo part again so here i have uh, if you can see the search and area part that is general physician and the area is delhi so it will show the data in text format it will it is not a uh, user friendly it will just show the text format for seeing it in the html uh, format i have used the next part i will show it so for connect front end with the backend APIs. Uh, I have used jQuery. So uh, I have used web services too, which, uh, which will help us to see the HTML format data. So it fetches the data from the database according to the parameters entered by the user. And it returns the HTML code, which is then rendered by the browser and displayed to the user. So I used jQuery on the front end to take input from the user and the and call the backend web services that will return the results in the form of HTML tags. So in the next slide, we'll see it. This is the web service to.php file. This is the part where I use the, uh, where we will see the data in HTML part format. So here are the changes from the web service.php file, where I used HTML codes, which will help us to see the uh, see it, the data in more user friendly. So, as we can see, uh, that doc doctor data is a, like diff class find doc to 
this these are the parts i have which will help us uh, in the next slide we will see it yeah so this is the search and area part and the value i have given to the keys is dentist and bangalore we can see doctor found in your city 24 years experience overall like that in the name of the doctor with the image this is this is used to do the testing of the web service 2.50 file we will see it in the demo this is a jquery which helps us to get input from the user so document dot ready function if the submit search button is clicked we uh, we will see the uh, we will enter the doctor cat, uh, category and doctor area text we will it will direct us to uh, the results in dot html file we will move on to the next step now we will go to the project demo Is the uh, web host visible? No, I can still see your video. Oh. Now, now I think web host is visible. Right? Yeah, now it is visible. Okay. So this is triple zero web host. Uh, site which is which i have used to host the my website and uh, here is the dashboard and uh, tools the file manager We will see it from the beginning. Yeah, this is doc search one, two, three by Ruthie. I will uh, show all the database and my file manager. This is the public HTML in the file manager where all the ports are uploaded and including global or CSS index or CSS and index or HTML and web service dot PHP web service. Which we, should, we have seen in the PPTs. So now we will see the data, database manager. This is PHP MyAdmin, and this is the table which shows the data which I have used. This is ID which is used as primary key, then doctor name, doctor information, doctor city, doctor image, and doctor category. This is all. This is the all database I created, and uh, after that we will see the. This is the postman, which will help us to, which is help, which helps us to test the data of my website. So, if I use general physician and in Delhi, then it will show the data in the format is 
in text format which we can see here that connected successfully and this is the id doctor name doctor info that is the 42 years experience and the doctor image so like this it will show if we will see web service 2.php then it will show it is in better better way this is the html display that uh, doctors found in your city experience and doctor name including the doctor image that uh, is the whatever data we have entered in the database it will show all the data. so we can change it like if you use it will show all the data that is entered in database so it is used to test the data uh, of the website that's why i have used postman now we will see the website this is the website which i have named as doc search and these are the CSS which help uh, which uh, which I've used. So if you click on search doctors, it will come, down. and after that I can enter the category that is uh, Will show doctors found in your city and including name and the experience, which you can see. Let's see, search for general position, it will show, show the data which I have used in the database so now we move back into the ppt yeah these are the references which i use and Thank you. If you have any query, you can contact me in my Gmail ID, which is ritesh.c001 at gmail.com. And if you have any question, you can ask. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I would say it was an okay presentation. The project demonstration was really well done. The way you have done the task, you have demonstrated really well. Okay. Uh, second of all, is that uh, you need to work on your overall presentation, right? So in the presentation, just uh, it is good that it is more project centric, but uh, I think you didn't add the conclusion slide. And this is like an important bit of presentation. So try to add a conclusion slide where you can talk about like uh, how Figma has like, you know, helped you in the presentation or let us say, what are the challenges that you faced or how do you have overcome the challenges, right? These are the things that can be included in the conclusion section. It will help you, like you know, conclude your overall presentation. After the demo, you just went on to like you know references and then Q and A. Right? So add a proper conclusion side, so that will be much better next time. Right? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Overall, I would say it was good. Just that uh, you need to work on your ending part. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So I think uh, we can conclude here for the day. You are the last intern for the day. Uh, so we'll end here for the day. Thank you for joining. We'll continue tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.